Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Hello, everyone. Welcome. We're very happy that you're joining us today. Uh, I am joined by our developer experience crew, who are very savvy in all things OpenShift, Kubernetes, and Cloud Native. Uh, today, uh, our our main driver will be Mohit, who's going to take us through. What what are you taking us through today, Mohit? Like you're you're going to take us on some kind of adventure, I right hear. Yeah, it will be around developer experience, how you can do that using different IDs. Awesome. Are you ready, sir? Or do we need to introduce? Oh, sorry. Uh, I'm a technical product marketing manager here at Red Hat. Mohit is a developer advocate here at Red Hat, uh, I'm assuming. Or, or Yeah, I work as a senior engineer at Red Hat R&D based out of India. Perfect. Awesome. Well, thank you for staying up late, I guess. Is it late over there? What time is it over there? Yeah, it's 8.30 at the night. Oof, okay. Well, hopefully this will be enjoyable for you, at the very least. So let's get started, man. What you got? Cool. Uh, I'll just start with the demos then, and I'll quickly share the screen. Yeah. Okay. If you can, let me know if you can't. While Mohit's uh, working on that, uh, we also have uh, Serena Doyle is on the call. Um, feel free to drop questions into the chat, and we'll do our best to try to respond to those. Uh, Absolutely. Uh, Sorry, I forgot to mention that. Yeah, thank you, Ryan, for the top cover there. Yes, I have integrated chat tools and everything so that I can see all the chats as they're happening and get them answered for you all as soon as possible. So ask away if you have questions. Mohit, take it away, buddy. Okay, cool. Uh, thanks. So uh, today, the main agenda we have here is to explain that how we are enhancing the developer experience around OpenShift. And this will basically cater to uh, whatever plug plugins or extensions we make for different IDs. The primary demo will be focused on uh, integrating this experience with uh, Microsoft VS Code. Uh, that is currently one of the most uh, favorite uh, ID used by developers around. So we'll just quickly highlight that what it uh, is all about. So if you see, uh, if you see the slide, these are some of the cloud providers which are supported by uh, Red Hat currently, and we have OpenShift from AWS, OpenShift from Azure, OpenShift of G GCP, and a local instance of OpenShift 4.x running on your laptop, which is known as Red Hat Core Ready Containers. So all these uh, cloud providers can be directly used inside your editor, and you can connect to them. You can deploy your applications on top of it. You can do all the debug, deploy, push commands directly from your editor. You need not toggle between your ID, uh, your uh, command line, and your console to just work around this. So the demo will showcase how that works. So the basic question is for whom this is all about, right? So the basic answer is we are targeting developers or who are the real kingmakers here. And so this extensions which are being developed is for the developer community. How can uh, they strengthen their workflow around OpenShift? And the demo for today is Red Hat OpenShift integrated with VS Code. Uh, I have some slides which are like very funky here, but yeah, that's just for the uh, demo to different customers and different uh, developers around the world. So this is a very uh, basic template which I have. So uh, the main uh, use case here is why do we need to have uh, uh, extension on top of VS Code? Uh, it can be also done directly from a command line, right? But as a developer, when we are working on any say code which is written on Node.js or written in Java, and we directly want to test that code on top of a production instance of OpenShift, right? And that instance can be uh, deployed anywhere on cloud, on AWS or on Azure or wherever it is. And we need to update, uh, continuously push our code on top of it to test whether it works seamlessly or not. So this extension will help you to do that update very quick, seamlessly. Uh, it's a self-service deployment where you can just, just do the push, uh, pull uh, um, images, you can see the logs, you can start the logs directly from your ID. You need not go to the console and verify that what type of logs are there. Should I start the build again? Should I start the deployment configs again? And those are the uh, other things. And even if you need to scale up them, right? If you have a node which needs to be scaled up, right? You can do it everything from your ID. Uh, so. 
and this is this is how easy yeah, it has become for developers to work around the code right my code can be deployed on any instance and can be tested very quickly the same node.js code can be tested on aws can be tested on azure can be tested on gcp anywhere it is and quickly i can just figure out whatever changes are needed and i can just work seamlessly without worrying about um, do i need this type of setup do i need that type of setup and basically improving the workflow which we have for developers and as vs code is a very smart id right so it has everything with what the code needs and to integrate a uh, openshift extension on top of it um, that things are whatever uh, kubernetes and openshift um, scenarios are needed we have embedded that in the extension and this extension is uh, open to the community so we get more feedback from the community that how it needs to be changed what feature needs to be added with every release of new version of openshift currently we are testing on uh, 4.5 and 4.6 and we are keep on having the releases every 3 weeks so the uh, iteration of the release is very uh, quick so the changes keep on happening with the extension currently if you go ahead and see on the marketplace so this extension can be downloaded from um, visual studio marketplace where this is hosted uh, from red hat so red hat has multiple extensions for different uh, scenarios like for a yaml extension for a java extension and same goes for openshift so the name of the extension is known as openshift connector and this is hosted by red hat and currently if you see it has approximately 19000 installs so there are two parameters where uh, microsoft allows us to see uh, the number of installs and number of downloads so the download currently will be very high because every time you update your vs code it keeps on increasing but the number of installs are those which the, uh, there are unique users for that extension so this is one of the uh, more one of the most used uh, extensions for vs code um, and uh, we are looking for improving it in the future and this is where you can go ahead and install and once you do install it will be automatically installed on your running vs code instance i'll showcase that later on in the demo but just for the heads up this is how it is great so these are some of the features which we have uh, in the extension itself uh, i will focus on every one of them individually when i demo it but on the upper level uh, as i mentioned uh, we can streamline the build and the deployment configs directly from your ids if you need to push your code uh, be it in any uh, preference of the developer any language preference of the developer you can continuously push it and you can directly stream and uh, view your logs from your id itself and see what is breaking what is uh, what changes needs to be done uh, you need not go to the main openshift console logs and see what has been broken so every interface every inner loop scenario which is there for a developer is there in your id itself you write your code you deploy your code you check your code you see your logs everything from your editor so i guess this is how we are trying to improve the developer experience around this so i'll quickly go ahead and do a demo i guess that will be more a uh, uh, good way to showcase what are the features we have right now there so okay So this is my VS Code instance, and I'm running this in the debug mode because we have more uh, uh, additional features which are currently not released in the marketplace, but we have them on the master branch. So uh, this is the VS Code instance. So if you go to the uh, VS Code tab, and there's extensions uh, column here. Uh, Chris, can you just help me if you can see the uh, size of the VS Code is perfect, or should I increase the font? Uh, I always tell people to increase the font, but it doesn't look that bad. So probably just plus one. Okay. Cool. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So if you go to the extensions tab here, right? Uh, so there are multiple extensions which are there on for VS Code, right? You and for uh, our extension name is OpenShift. So just have to search OpenShift here, and you see this is the latest version of OpenShift which is there. And I, as I showcased on the marketplace instance. this reflects the same data which is present there so you just uh, for the demo purpose i have already installed it uh, but if it is not installed you just have to go here and do an install and it will be automatically installed so once this extension gets installed in your vs code okay so uh, on the panel here you, you can see uh, there is a VA open shift icon which basically uh, means that your extension is successfully installed here So you have to click here. 
Now this is the view which is provided. The next thing is we need to connect to an OpenShift instance. So for the demo purpose, I would be connecting to uh, OpenShift, in OpenShift which is running on Azure and it is OpenShift version 4.4. And so these are some of the action items which are available for the extensions. So this first one is how you can log into a cluster. Logging to a cluster can be done in multiple ways. One is one of them is you can provide your credentials, which will be your username and password. And the second one will be your token authentication. So if you have any one of them, that should work. This one is switching the context. So whatever entries which are already there in your cube config and you want to work with those entries, uh, you can just do a switch context here. And once you do that, it will list down all the entries which are there in your cube config. You need to select one of them and the context will automatically change to that cluster. Uh, but the thing is that cluster should be up and running, otherwise it won't show anything. Uh, but yeah, you can anytime run the, uh, up the cluster and start working with it. Now let's go ahead and do a login of it. Okay, so let me just remove this. Okay, so it mentions, do you want to log into a different cluster? I would say yes, I would log into a different cluster. So as I mentioned, we have two options here. One is you can log in using your credentials and the other one is can log in your token. So let me just grab the credentials quickly. Uh, okay, so I'll be running on okay. Azure instance. So go here and I provide new URL and I provide this URL. It will ask me to provide the username. Let me get the password also. Okay. So the new user will be, let's say, cube admin. And I will just say the new password. Okay. Fail to log into the cluster. Great. So this happens in the live demo, but yeah. Okay. Yes. The live demo grounds have <laughs> struck. All right. Yes. Let's see. Uh, audio command not found. Oh, is it trying oh. to test with ODO login too? Huh. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so okay. this is, it happens because we already are on the latest branch of them and it will always figure out the latest ODO. So let oh, me quickly. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you need to drop that in real quick. Yep. So cool. I'll just. No worries, man. This is how it goes. Yep. I have troubleshoot yep. sometimes. It's not okay. a real demo unless something goes wrong. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Now okay. we know it's real. <laughs> I guess this was yeah. a part, part. I guess this was a part of Mohit's script as well, just to convince us. <laughs> yeah, if you, I mean, if you're on the chat right now, right, like, feel free to drop in questions. Um, we have a lot of talent, like, just hanging out on the call, ready to answer whatever you may have. Uh, the the issue Mohit is struggling struggling with right now is uh, he needs a latest version of Odeo, our developer uh, open source tool. Um, so as soon as the extension store. So yeah, out. meanwhile, this gets loaded. Uh, so uh, just giving a reference. So we, uh, this extension in the uh, hood uses Odo, uh, which is a command line tool to interact with all Kubernetes and OpenShift uh, related stuff. So whatever commands and whatever actions which are happening with this extension is basically running an Odo command in the background. So we strongly integrate with the new features which Odo has and with this extension. So every time Odo does there's a new release, there will be a new release with this extension also. Okay, it should not take time, but that's right. Just for a quick review, where's the VS code running? Is that's on your laptop, right? Yeah. 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 Okay. Local and machine. so Odo is you're you're downloading to your laptop to get this connection set up. Yeah, so uh, the thing is, in the previous versions of extension, what we are, had was the users got a prompt that need, they need to download two CLIs. One is OC and one is Odo. Uh, but in the uh, latest release, what we have done is we have already embedded the OC and Odo uh, CLI tools directly into the extension itself. So now the user need not worry about anything. They, As soon as they download the extension, uh, these tools will be available to them. This has increased the size of the extension, but this has also given a flexibility for the dev, uh, developers not to worry about any CLI uh, stuff related. So they can just uh, work around the uh, extension itself. Okay, so. Mm. 
Is it okay. stalling or is it connecting? Do we it, need... is con it is trying to connect. Trying to connect, is, okay. Yeah. Ah, just... uh, the internet. <laughs> yep. So just to let everybody know, uh, our follower count is a little off. I'm going to turn it off here in a second. But basically, we're a little over 800 users. We're trying to get to 1,000 users by the end of the month. It's the 23rd. Like, go tell your friends and family. Come follow us on Twitch. I would, I would really appreciate that. <laughs> uh, it's twitch.tv slash redhatopenshift. Um, give us a follow and greatly appreciate it. Thank you. I guess this should help. Looks like you might have a space after the password. Oh, that would suck. Mm, yeah, I'm not sure if it gets stripped or not. Mm. Yeah, so. Uh, Okay, so now uh, the extension will basically, once you do a new entry for the username and password, the extension will ask you to, does, do you want to save the password for, and the username for the future references, right? So that will uh, allow you to just uh, do a quick one. We don't have to mention the username and password every time. So now I'm already connected to this instance, but it is doing the background check to see all the pods are running and all the operators which are running or not. So if you see on the uh, extension side, so this is the extension which is uh, connected to an open shift on Azure. And if I go here and then do open console dashboard, right? The internet is really slow, but okay. So it will allow you to open this instance directly on your browser where you can see the um, provider of this OpenShift, right? So let's nice. open this quickly. And and you're, this is all just right there in VS Code. Yeah, so everything is done through VS Code. Uh, you just have to do a few clicks and you're up there. Mm -hmm. awesome. so, so now if you see here, uh, this is the version of OpenShift 4.4.9 and uh, it should open up there. It's loading, loading, yeah. And you see the provider is Azure here. Mm -hmm. So this is basically OpenShift running on Azure. Uh, okay. The same way I, uh, uh, we can connect to an instance which is like running on uh, AWS, but I'll showcase that in the later part of the demo. So now I hear, here you can see there are multiple projects which are listed by default. So I go here and do a new project and the project name will be 2H, okay. Nice. So T should go at the last. I should not have done the Twitch one, okay, but okay. Uh, <laughs> this basically sorts you to the alphabetical order, but let me do a new one, no issues. So I do demo Twitch. There we go. So, that, so we have everything at the top. So yeah, we have some funny things which happen in the live demo, so this is how it is. So if you see, uh, this is how, um, the project get, got successfully created, but this is currently on your local instance. It is not deployed onto the main production instance of OpenShift on Azure, right? So this will happen when we have all the components up. So let me uh, do a new component. So the next functionality which we have for a project is you can create a new component. A component can be any type of uh, project which is a node or which is on Java or on Go. And the services, uh, the new services are basically the services which are supported by service catalog in OpenShift 4.x. This also supports OpenShift 3.x. So it's not necessary that you need to have OpenShift 4.x to work with this extension. Uh, this extension also supports the OpenShift 3.x also. Nice. So if I go ahead and do new component, so basically this will uh, ask me that which application we want to create this uh, component upon right so you saw i just created a project i did not create an application uh, so now i can go ahead and create an application and i name that application is application one two three and then there are three different ways where we can create a, a component that can be your git repository you can just copy paste your git url and paste it here and that will create a component out of it uh, based on the supporting language which we have uh, you can also have a binary file. It can be a tar file, it can be an XZB file, and you can just provide that location. 
and it will create a component out of it. And it can also create a component based on the files which are present in your local directory. Right. So for this uh, one, I'll just quickly show a Git one. So I have um, a React, a simple React application, which basically allows you to see the current weather in any part of the world. So I'll just go here and do Git repository. And after doing this, uh, basically every component should have a context folder. So the usefulness of having a context folder is as soon as we create a component, it creates a .config file inside that folder. And that config file can be shared across a teams, across uh, organizations, so that people need not do the same step again and again. They can just use that config file and create the component out of the box very quickly. And that config file will have all the entries which are needed for the component to start. So once we have this component created, uh, I'll just showcase you that how that config file looks. So let me just do a new folder, right? I'll go to downloads and I'll do a new folder and I say demo. And I'll say add. Now I'll paste my Git repository URL here and I'll go here. And so it will automatically figure out uh, the uh, branch which you want to select. So right now my repo has only one branch. So it provided me only one option. But if your repo has say multiple branches then you need to test out one specific branch to create a component. For example, you have a Node.js application and on a test branch you have uh, deployed new features and you want to test those new features on OpenShift. So you can use that branch itself and test that branch completely on top of OpenShift. You need not uh, worry about changing any branch and testing it. So it's it becomes very useful for uh, new features to be tested. So I'll just select this. And once that is selected, yeah, should pop me a new option. So once that gets selected, uh, it will ask me to provide what type of component I'm creating, what will be the version of that component, and and so on. So let me name the component as node. Twitch. I'm just keeping everything as Twitch so that we have that consistency there for the demo. Now, this will basically if you, uh, uh, pop me the list of components which are available for this extension to work upon. So as I mentioned previously, this extension works on top of uh, Odoo. And whatever component types which are supported on Odoo uh, will be present here. So as soon as we keep on adding the component type support in Odoo, uh, this list will keep on updating. So it now as I'm list or is there more to that like there's Sorry. more there than that there's more languages there is that scroll or is that the entire list okay no, it's, uh, about these are right. yeah <laughs> like ruby's not there what's going on <laughs> yeah we have uh, whatever we support i guess this keep this will keep on updating as soon as we have more support around it but these right. are some of the ones so now my repo was a react application so the component type is supports this node so i'll just do node.js and it will prompt me which version of Node.js I want to select. So this also gives an advantage, for example, if you need to test your code on say Java version eight, not on Java version 10, you may just mm -hmm. need to see that. So you can specify that specific version also. And once you specify that version, this code will be, uh, the component will be created on top of that version itself. So that is uh, really cool. For example, I just need to test this one on Node.js version 10, so I just, just select 10. And once I have that, uh, it will basically prompt me to uh, push that component directly on the cluster as now because this, uh, so if you see the component is successfully created, it gives you a message that to deploy it in cluster, you need to push, uh, do a push option, right? And it also allows you to have this action known as push. Nice. And if you see on the uh, view side, you see the command currently is not pushed. Right. So it also so gives on the left hand side, could you right click that? I'm just curious yeah. what the options are. Yes. So now if you go here, right, you okay. you can do you can do multiple options here, right? So as this is currently on the local side of your uh, OpenShift, right. it is not deployed on the production. So you have you can create a new route for it, you can create a new storage for it, you can describe the component, and from here you can do a push. Beautiful. So there are, uh, you can do a push as soon as the component was created, or you can do a push later on. So for example, if I want to create a route also and then do a push, so I do go ahead and do a new route. And then I can select, okay, this was my, okay. No Twitch app, no Twitch, not push. The route will be there when it gets pushed. That's awesome. Yes. Yeah. So it'll be publicly accessible the second you push it. Yes, as soon as I do a push, once the command gets a push, it will, right, right, it will change here and it will update it. That's and awesome. there is one uh, and there is one more third option which is there which is known as no context so for example let me just create this url so 
I, I'll, so the no context part I'll explain first, and then I'll go ahead with this. So the mm-hmm. no context part is basically for those components which have been migrated, but they do not have that context folder with them. For example, okay. if you remove that context folder from your workspace, that will the status of that component will change to no context, because then it uh, it figures out that okay, you I do not have that configuration file, so I cannot do anything. Right. So. Uh, but there is an option we have provided where you can do an import, and as soon as you do an import, it will ask you to provide that con- uh, con- context folder, and it will again move back to its original state, be it a post state or be it a not post state. Nice. These are the three states which we have. So now moving on to the creating a URL. So as I you saw, I created a new URL, right, which is basically a route. So it has two supports. One is you can create a secured URL, mm-hmm. and other one is you can create non secured URL. So just for the demo, I'll say. Let's not go with the secured one. Let's go with the non-secured one. Yeah, makes sense for demos. Yep. So we see uh, it basically prompts you a notification that, okay, the URL is getting cre- created here. And as soon as the URL gets created, it will again ask you, you do you need to post the, those changes? Mm-hmm. I'll go ahead and do yes. I need to post those changes now into my cluster because I am I have my instance up with my route. So as soon as I do that, if you see here, uh, this will basically open an integrated terminal on VS Code site. And it will basically run the Odo command, uh, which is running on the background for every action which we have. And That's it will awesome. give you the st- uh, status of the component deployment, right? So now it has uh, verified all the uh, component prerequisite. It has triggered a build, and now it is waiting for the build to finish. Uh, this will take some time based on the speed of the internet that you have. So uh, we'll just keep it that way. Let it finish. So now if you he- see here, right? Uh, so this uh, currently is having I think this show. So this is a twist demo which uh, context folder which I created. Mm-hmm. And it will have a dot odo folder. Inside that dot odo folder, we have this config.yml. Now if I open this config.yml, okay, let me just oh, go away terminal. Yeah. <laughs> so, so if you have this uh, YML, if you see, uh, this will have all yeah. the configuration details which are needed for your component to be deployed, right? Nice. It has the name of the route. It has the port which is getting uh, selected. For this application, I had only one port which was open. So that is why it took the default port. But if your mm-hmm. application, for example, have multiple ports, uh, when you create a route, it will prompt you to select the uh, different ports you want to create, uh, you want to select for that route. So that yes. option is also there. So right now it was default, so it took 8080. The name of uh, the project, uh, the application, the component, uh, what is the source type? So there are three types, right? One is Git, one is binary, and one is local. So it okay. provides, okay, this is a Git type. Which branch I selected? This was the head branch. What was the name of the uh, uh, GitHub location? So this was uh, it. What is the type of the component? So all the other information related to that component itself is residing in this config file. And once we share this config file and use the same config file in that context folder, everything will be replicated again. And we can so, we can sh- we can check that into Git, and everybody else yes. will have it too. So yep. everybody will be just in sync. Yes, off exactly. and running. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. What's uh waiting for build to push? Is that what is it? What step is that? Is it actually building on the back end? Can we see that in OpenShift happening? Or yeah. So um, let me just quickly go there. I'm putting you on the spot here. My bad. Sorry. <laughs> no, no, I'm that sure, is. I'm sure is, Serena's shaking her fist at me, like, "Why are you asking these questions?" Chris? No, no, that is. That is, that is <laughs> those, those features are. Oh, there so it, okay, it did finish. Now it's deploying yeah. the component. Okay, so yeah. it actually pulled the image. It did all the building. It paired it up with the binaries and all that fun stuff. Okay, cool. Okay, let me go here on the dashboard. Okay, and uh, I know the idea is not to leave the IDE, but it's, sometimes yeah. it's cool to see it happening. Yeah, and we have also integrated everything which a user wants to do it, uh, to see it on the console also. So for example, whatever actions which are happening in the ID and they want to see it on the console, we have actions for that. So oh, wow. okay. uh, that is pretty much there for the user to see. It's not, uh, they can easily go ahead and check it out. So if I, if you see, this is the project which was there, uh, demo mm-hmm. Twitch and I, so, okay. Let me go for the build spot. I guess in the build spot we will have this. Meanwhile, this is getting loaded. So, okay. So if you okay. see, uh, it has finished basically. And if you go here and if you see, this is already created here. App123 was the name of the application, the name of the component, and this is there. 
Nice. So it syncs, uh, the sync is pretty much there. We can see on the console side, on the editor side, everything is there. Now, mm-hmm. as soon as this is created, right? Now you would definitely want to see the component which is deployed, right? Like, so either you open the URL directly from here or you wow. go here and um, to the component and in the component, you have multiple options now. Now, as it is posed, the number of actions which are available into that component has increased, right? If you see when it was in not post state, you just had few options, which basically is because the component is still in the local, it's not there in the production. But now as it is there, you can now show logs, you can follow the logs and you can link multiple components. I'll get back to how you can link multiple components. But now uh, let me showcase you how the route works. So now I've created the route, I've deployed it on the cluster. I will just open in browser and it will prompt me to open that uh, in whatever instance we have. Let's pray that it works <laughs> because sometimes this is the first deployment we have. So <clears throat> there's no brain involved. It's just internet connection that I'm worried about. It see, it already okay. says React app. Yeah, there we go. Ta da! Yes. So do whatever you So let's like, okay, I live in Pune. And this I is. I apologize for my dog in the background. Sorry, folks. <laughs> and this is India. Okay. Let's see what's the weather here. I hope it fetches it. Awesome. Oh, nice. So, Okay, and let me do Seattle. And okay, US. Okay, so we have a clear sky in Seattle today. So stop. So, yeah, it. this is. <laughs> Are you sure this app is working right? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Are the mountains out today? People watching from Seattle. <laughs> yeah, I, I got. Uh, I checked with my friends. They said that okay, it was raining yesterday. So. Okay. Cool. All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so yeah, uh, this is how you can just create, deploy a quick application on OpenShift, and this is currently running on OpenShift on Azure. The same way we can run on if you have an OpenShift cluster on AWS, right? For example, um, so I have a cluster on AWS. If you see, I can do the same process, exactly same process, and just deploy it on this AWS cluster, and the things will be uh, pretty much same. Now, if I go back to my VS Code ID, right? Uh, Okay, so now it is in the post state, right? Now, if I need to undeploy this, right? I want to uh, remove this from the cluster, but I want them to be on the local instance. I can just do undeploy. The next step is the debug step where I can debug my application directly real time on the OpenShift directly. Nice. Uh, But the thing with debug is it currently works only when you have created a component out of a local workspace. Okay. Because then it allows you to debug, uh, set breakpoints and everything, and then you can debug your component directly. So the support for debug is currently for local components, and it supports Node.js and Java as of now. Uh, we are going to add multiple co- program, uh, languages on top of it, but currently it has no and, and Java support. Can you can you help the audience to understand what local means? Yeah. So okay. So this is the component which I created using a Git repository, right? Now right. I can create a component directly from a local workspace, right? So I'll just go here and add a folder to workspace. And let me just say, no, just, okay. Okay, this is weird, can see. My Zoom instance is weird, but okay. That looks... Okay. Fine. Yeah. Add folder to workspace, and I will just say node. No, no. Yeah. Oh, so you would have to just check out the thing locally. Yeah, I have to. Uh, basically, okay. I have to. I see what you mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah so. Yeah, so as long, so as long as you're pulling down the Git repo locally to your machine, you, yeah. It's. It, but the way you're doing it, where it's just you know deploying from yeah. Git directly from yeah, OpenShift, it takes out that step. It makes everything in the node or in the cluster as opposed to having to bounce back and forth between, oh, now I need to check something in the Git locally to do something to push it, da, 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 right? Like it's just all yeah. in the cluster yeah. on the other way. And this route, it's, there is a there is a Git repo on your machine. You're using it explicitly for uh, interacting with OpenShift and your application, correct? Good assessment. Yeah. Yeah, so and one more thing here we have is, for example, this is the local, for example, I have a Node.js repository, right, which I cloned it on my system and I added it onto my workspace. Now, if I go here and again in this project, I go and do new component and I select the same application. 
Now, if I do workspace directory, this will automatically prompt me whatever folders which are there in my workspace. Nice. So here I need not worry about okay which folder it was. I have already the drop downs available. I'll just say Node.js ex, and it will ask me to say provide the name. I said Node local, and the the steps are same. So after that, you just select the type of the Node.js uh, type component type at Node.js version as the latest one, and just push that component right. So I guess here here and. The workflow remains the same, whether it's a Git component, a binary, and whatever it is. So again, I do a push here, and it will mm -hmm. again start uh, the deployment again. So meanwhile, this is happening. Uh, I'll showcase the other features which we have. Sweet. OK. So now, if you see here, uh, this component is already deployed on my cluster, right? Now I need mm -hmm. to see the logs of it. So I go and do a show logs. Ooh. Now, if you see here, um, yeah, that doesn't do, that arrow is deceiving. <laughs> <laughs> I'm already getting confused with that, but okay. So the idea of having logs directly into the editor was, so there are two ways where people check logs, right? They, are, uh, uh, they have a habit of doing the command line stuff and checking the logs there. But what we have done here is as soon as you do show log, it will open up a panel in your editor itself and all the logs which are there for that cluster uh, will be here and you can do a quick search. For example, I need to search what was the debug port so it will give you a very graded, and now if you do enter. So we have this uh, search support also into the logs. And this is basically the logs which are currently uh, not updated dynamically because what I did was show logs. So there's one more option which is known as follow logs, which will basically do um, a streaming of the logs. If you see, this is already streaming. If you add more, if you do more actions or if you change something, it will automatically keep on updating and this will be dynamically that's, updated. That's awesome. You can, anytime, you can anytime stop the streaming or you can anytime stop the auto scrolling. So these are some of the UI enhancements which we have for the. That's just system. all baked into the connector, right? Yes. So everything is uh, checking the logs, pushing everything is done on the connector side. You need not that's go awesome. up outside of the editor in, for anything. Yeah, right. like you just go click, 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 and there's your logs. Yes, exactly. So, and one that more thing. save you so much time. <laughs> if, so, the thing is, if you have multiple tabs open here, right, and you need not worry about, okay, which tab is showing the logs, you can go here, and in the open editors tab, you can see these are two which are open. So, you can anytime go ahead and click on them, and that will automatically pop up here. Nice. So, the uh, idea here is to support that. Uh, but for some developers, they need not want to see this in editor. They still want to see the old way where logs are shown in an integrated terminal. So we also have that feature enabled. So this is by de uh, default. You go ahead and do in settings. And you do logs. So this is the uh, by default, which is there. Uh, the show log and the follow log and the describes command will be shown in the terminal. But once you check this, it will be shown in the editor. So we have this flexibility for the developers to update this based on their use case or their preferences. But if they don't want this to be updated, it will be shown in the terminal every time. And if they want this to be shown in the editor, it will be done that. So we have provided some of the flexibilities using this. OK, so let me stop the streaming. And close, close this too, and open the terminal. Okay, so you see this is the local one is also pushed, and let me just open this in browser. So now, as you see, I have not created a route yet, but if I do open in browser, it should prompt me to, it shouldn't show me that, okay, the route is not created. What should I open? So as soon as we do that, it says, okay, there is no route here. Do you want to create a route and open it? I said, yes, go ahead and do and do create. And then it will be asking me to do that. Nice. And the same way it is. So uh, for the user, it is much easier to uh, understand if they have missed any step, the extension will prompt them that, okay, this is not there. So you need to do this. So the route is created. Again, I have to push it. So as soon as we create a route or create a new storage on top of it, we have to always do a new push. Mm -hmm. So that it that gets the cluster. Yeah. But if you are not doing the push, it will always remain on to the local instance of that. 
So now if you see the as the component was already deployed, right? It, the step became very quick. It just needed to apply the changes with the URL and everything was done. Nice. So now if I try to open this from here itself, I think this should work. Yeah. So we have this Sweet. Node.js page, which is there uh, running. So now if you see, we have this no database, which is showing as configured. Hmm. Uh, because it, it is not linked to any database, right? Makes sense. So now if I go here and I do link service, so basically this link service command is for to link any database on, on top of it. I need to link a MongoDB service or I need to link a MySQL service. I can link that. But for that, I need to have the service catalog enabled on my OpenShift instance. So that is one of the prerequisites that we need to have if we need to link any services. The same way we, need, we have a link component so by link component uh, for the users, uh, this might uh, be uh, confusing how link component and link services are. So uh, I'll explain this in more detail. So link component is basically, uh, the original component is a Node.js component. And I need, and for say it's a front end, front end component, right? Now I need to link this with a backend component and that backend is written in Java. So now to link these two components, I need to have one more component created as on the same lines as I created a front end one. And the backend component will be created uh, using Java. Now we have two components. And now in the first one, I go ahead and do a link component and I will provide the um, name of the second component here. And those two components will be automatically linked. So basically to link uh, the front end and the back end, you need to have this link component. And if you need to have the linking of front end with a service like a uh, database service or anything, you just have to do link service. And once you have these two done, and then you want to unlink them, you also have an option to unlink here. So all those uh, scenarios where you need to work with multiple components, a component and a service, is everything is done using these actions here itself. Now for users, these actions are also available using the command palette. So for example, if you do on Mac, uh, it is command shift and P, and this uh, will open, and you just have to type open shift. So the spelling, yeah. So if you see, all the actions are there. So describing a URL, deleting a URL, um, showing the logs, opening in browser, creating a new service, everything is directly on the command itself. So if someone is very much familiar with VS Code and wants to use using the command palette also, these actions are there. And if someone is very much uh, useful with the actions using uh, click animations, it is pretty much here, right? Now, once we have this, this component was created using a local workspace directory, right? As I mentioned previously, the debug action will only be supported when you create a component when, from a local workspace. So let's go ahead and do a debug here. As soon as I do a debug, uh, the debugger session will start. So this debugger session is basically a Node.js debugger session, which comes by default with VS Code. But if we need to debug, say, a Java application, uh, so there is a... Uh, debugger for Java uh, extension from Red Hat itself. So if you go here and see, see uh, the num different extension which we have from Red Hat, right? For VS Code. Uh, let me open it. So there is extension known as debugger for Java. And uh, we, you need to use this. Okay, okay, I can share this. So this is one of the extensions which is uh, which it needs. And so as soon as you uh, do this, it the extension will prompt you that that extension is not yet installed. You need to install it. Or else if you already have that extension installed into your uh, VS Code, it won't prompt you and it will start the debugger session. So now the node just uh, was already installed by default. It didn't prompt me to install any extension and it said debugger session has started. And you see here, the debugger is already running. So if you see, this is how the debugger looks here. And if I need to go here and say debug which application, okay, let me go here and say views, index.html. Okay. So I can, uh, any application which I have, I can debug it directly from here and I can just keep on working with that. You can also write this in server.js. Okay. Let me just check if it has 
connected to Mongo. So for example, if my MongoDB was already up and running, right? And if I added a breakpoint here, and then again, I had refreshed that code, it will basically uh, stop at this breakpoint because the debug session is already enabled. And this will work on top of this application, which was deployed here. So this is how the debug feature is interlinked with this. Okay, so now, uh, once we have this scenario up and running, right? If I go here and see in this local workspace, I have this config file. And here you see the entries are different for config file, right? Because the source location is the root folder because it's in the root of my workspace. Uh, the type is local and the port which is hosted and the other names which application project component, everything is currently present here. Now for users who want to uh, see the build configs, the deployment configs directly from your editor itself, we have the um, dependency known as uh, for Kubernetes extension. So this is a, a Kubernetes extension which is developed by Microsoft. And this is added as a prerequisite uh, when you install the OpenShift connector. So for this, what we need to do is, um, okay. So if you go to this Kubernetes extension, if you can see what are the clusters which are present. So these list of clusters are basically uh, the entries which are there in my cube config, in my local cube config, right? So I have this entry here. And if I, uh, so we have uh, extended the API of the Kubernetes extension uh, to support OpenShift here. So the Kubernetes extension is developed by Microsoft folks and we work in tandem with them to create, uh, extend this extension and add support for OpenShift. So if I go to the project section here, uh, so if you see, uh, this is the default project which is loaded and these are all the OpenShift ones. So for example, if I go here and say Twitch one and I want to this one to be the default one, I can say that use this project and all the entries like deployment configs, workloads, everything will keep on updating based on this project. But for now, we already have this demo Twitch as the current project, so that won't be updated. And from here also, you can just open this pro directly this project into your console. If I do this, and that will open the specific project in your console, you need not uh, go to the console and switch between different projects. This will open the direct, that project itself. The console. If you see the cluster projects and the URL is automatically created and that should be there. So while it is loading, I'll go uh, to the workloads. Okay. So in this workloads, we have this uh, build configs. So if I go to the build configs, I have this build, which I showed a few minutes back, right? This build was running. Now, I can directly rebuild this from here itself. I can show the logs here itself. I can follow the logs. And you can even, I can delete this build from here itself. I did not go to the console again and to do this. But then let's rebuild this, right? I do a rebuild of it and that, that will start this and let's go to the console and see the builds, whether it is rebuilding or not. So if you see, it's, uh, the new build is automatically running. It is created and it is just done from your VS Code instance. You need not do anything on the instance less than a minute ago and it's running. And the same way uh, as as I open a specific project in console, I can also open this specific build in the console. So if I do open in console, this will open that specific build in the console. So the uh, advantage which we have here is the users can work on a specific build, specific deployment config, specific image streams, which are available here and just check those specific things in the console directly instead of uh, navigating the console and seeing which, uh, which elements are present where. And everything is uh, happening from your editor itself. So you can just uh, uh, not worry about that. Okay, where it is, uh, what is happening in the console? The things are uh, running seamlessly. And the same goes with the deployment configs. So now I have two deployment configs. And if I do, uh, if I do a right click onto this, it will open the uh, deployment config YAML directly into my editor. So I can uh, still view whatever, uh, entries which are there for that deployment config, the YAML entries, and I can uh, work around it. And if I open this again, I can also show the logs here and let me just check. So if you see, uh, 
as i showed we can directly go to the specific build directly here and we are already on that build section directly in the console and this feature is there for uh any resources of kubernetes right it is just not specific to openshift here it is uh, unique to any kubernetes resources so uh, for example if you are uh, just working on an openshift uh, cluster you can do the resource working with openshift if you're just working on a kubernetes cluster which is not on openshift you can still do the same things uh, okay I had a, a couple of questions from the chat stream. I wanted to check in on if, if you're all right with that. Someone asked about uh, whether this build was happening, whether there was a, a jar file involved. This was a Node.js or JavaScript uh, React repo, right? Yeah. Yeah, so this, uh, for folks who maybe are less familiar with OpenShift, your build and all of that is going to happen on the cluster using this uh, build config resource in order to kind of uh, spec that out how it should happen. Um, I tried to lay out kind of a, a flow of which resources you might interact with um, in, the, in the chat um, for folks that are trying to trace that flow. Um, mm -hmm. But this should make it uh, very easy for you. You shouldn't need to interact with these directly very much unless you need to go back and customize them. But this is great that uh, they're all exposed and accessible right there. So um, super cool. I also, I think I saw when you did a right click, um, was there an option for uh, watch uh, in the right click menu? Um so yeah, so in the build section, there is no option for watch, but if you go to the OpenShift extension and if in that project itself, in the component, you can do a watch of that component. So if you continuously keep on updating your uh, files and you need to see how they're getting deployed. So this watch feature will be very much useful there. So we have right. the watch, we have the push, we have the undeploy command, uh, everything is there for that specific component. <clears throat> And even when you pull up the watch, awesome. it's still right here in IDE, right? Yes, everything. Yeah, you uh, you need awesome. not change the ID anywhere, right? Yeah, like it's all right here in this one screen for you. Yeah. So, and one more thing which we are going to add in the future release is right now uh, you need to have the instance of OpenShift from uh, you need to create an instance of OpenShift, right? Whether it's on AWS, on Azure, or your local system. But in the next release of this extension, we'll provide an action where you can set up an OpenShift dot x instance directly from your extension itself so for wow. that also you need not go out of your editor you just have to do a few clicks and a new openshift instance will be up and running and that will use uh, red hat code ready containers uh, I see. directly on the uh, editor itself so yeah so that will be a new feature which will be releasing soon i guess so we are working on that and we are getting few few feedbacks around it but yeah once that is up we'll have updated on the marketplace and maybe tweet around it so that people can know about it oh yeah absolutely maybe you can come back on and show us that'd be cool yeah i think yeah that's a, uh that feature is really exciting so yeah maybe yeah like, I just... that would that would be a pretty cool stream i think for us to yeah. to do together absolutely uh i'm looking through the chat ryan i'm not seeing much of anything there is a survey that serena would like everybody to take i will copy and paste that uh survey feedback form i'll just say feedback form i apologize for the dog again uh many things are happening here today but yeah so the uh the, thank you so much my head for joining us today thank you ryan thank you serena thank you everyone uh when is our next one it is two weeks from now right ryan I, I believe, let me confirm with Serena, but I think she is available one week from today. Oh, fun. Um, okay, so we could. Serena, are you are you around to confirm? I am around to confirm, yeah. I'm available next week, and what we were talking about is Ooh. the plan, upcoming plans for OpenShift 4.6, the developer experience there okay, in the console. Cool. So. so next Tuesday is pretty booked for the stream. Schedule, to be honest with you, but... Ooh. We could okay. slide you in Tuesday afternoon or Wednesday or Thursday. Okay. Uh, we might All have right. to shift shift that week. Uh, if we're going to do this weekly, we'll, we'll have to establish that in the streaming calendar. But yeah, no, I look forward to having okay. you all on next week. Sounds great.
All right. uh, the next stream that we are having here is uh, looks every like two tomorrow. weeks. Yeah, every two weeks for uh, us here on the developer experience office hours kind of deal. And then tomorrow we're doing multi-cluster management on OpenShift explained for developers as part of our OpenShift Commons briefing. Um, so that's at noon Eastern GMT, switch to 1600 GMT UTC. Uh, so yeah, join us tomorrow. Uh, follow, go to, yeah, please follow Mohit on all the things. Uh, hit up openshift.tv to hit, see where all we're streaming and uh, subscribe to our calendar from there as well. Uh, we have a public Google calendar that you can just add in to your Google calendar and it will let you know where to go to find us when we are live streaming. So thank you everyone for joining us today. Mohit, thank you again for another wonderful, absolutely great demo. And Ryan and Serena, thank you so much for ask, answering questions. Thanks, yep. everybody. Thank you. Thank you for Thanks, all. Have a wonderful day. See you next day. time. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.